Dobre utro. My name is Manja Giesbrecht and it's very delightful to come to this place where my father studied. He must have been in around 1915, I would presume. Then later on he went to Teachers College and he had these great dreams of going also. His uncle was going to sponsor him to go to Germany to study. Of course, that didn't materialize and they were, and he left for Canada in 1926. And he, instead of teaching in Canada, he went into agriculture. And um, this is where I was born then in Manitoba. And uh, my father often talked about his, his um, he was a very romantic man and he talked about his uh, life in, in, um, in here in the Ukraine. And um, when he dated my mother, he often um, talked about these things and, and uh, quoted poetry and at home he, come from, from milking, he'd come with his sit or stand under the kitchen window and he would uh, serenade my mother. It was almost, it was very beautiful and I guess I got a little piece of that which I like to do. Um, poetry and literature are very, nature is very important to me. And uh, I thank you, sir. I thank you very much. This is just most delightful. Well, uh, this is the village that I was born in in 1928 and we uh, uh, my father was taken to Siberia in 1931 the village threw us out of the house and we had to walk all the way to Militopol that's where we settled for a number of years from there we went and lived in Nikopol for for the rest until 1943 till I left for Germany I'm an engineer myself and I have a construction company and come here very often. As a matter of fact, um, very good friends with the mayor, uh, uh, Petro Zipanovich. So I know him quite well and know the, living, uh, the village and I'm trying to help him as much as possible. And uh, what's your name? Uh, my name is Harry Giesbrecht. A new chapter in the story began with the rebirth of the Mennonite presence in the 1990s. The Mennonite return and outreach trip will bring us into contact with the institutions and people with whom Mennonites are now working together as we seek to build the fabric of a new Mennonite society in Ukraine. The Mennonite Center is involved in many different projects and we partner with many different groups from the community and one of the Partnerships is with uh, the mayor of the former Mennonite village of Lichtenau and the mayor here has uh, asked us to help along with a project that takes care of 50 kindergarten children and we are visiting there now and the children are running around outside and we're looking at the classrooms and the washroom facilities and the, the bedrooms. The children here uh, stay, some of them stay here the entire week uh, uh, 24 hours a day and because the parents are out working somewhere and often uh, uh, there are no parents and uh, so this is a very valuable outreach to the community a very valuable service that we provide <laughs> they look so grumpy uh, we have just completed our visit to Farmer Yuri. Uh, we have extended small micro loans to him so that he could purchase a baler and uh, a weed sprayer. And with the baler, he helps the community uh, with their uh, straw and hay as well as his own. Farmer Yuri has a farm of about 100 hectares, of which uh, 50 hectares are sunflowers, and the rest is to wheat and barley. In addition, he has uh, 15 pigs and other miscellaneous uh, poultry. Um, he is uh, a very good partner of ours. He is a model in the community to help others learn uh, from his exemplary uh, farming practices. Uh, we're standing in front of the former uh, deaf uh, dumb school in Tiga, in the Malachna colony. Uh, this building served uh, as a school uh, for children of the Mennonite communities as well as the surrounding Russian communities. The teachers uh, 
were educated in Europe and throughout the Russian Empire, and uh, it was a model school for the entire Russian Empire in its day. As each group left, those that were left here sang it to those that were leaving. And on the very last train, when there were no people here anymore, the Ukrainian and Russian people sang it for the Mennonites as they pulled out. We're presently vis visiting the Lichtenau train station where there were very many emotional partings of families. First in the 1920s when families were split as they left to Canada and the U.S. and later on in the 40s when many people, uh, Mennonites, were sent into uh, the east to Siberia. And uh, by the end of the, f uh, the mid-40s, near the end of the war, there were no Mennonites left here anymore. We visited the Delina School, uh, and it is a school that presently has about 50 students and a kindergarten class in addition to that of about 12 students. The, the school was getting smaller and smaller, and it was on the verge of being closed, but we added the, uh, we helped fund the kindergarten and so that brought the numbers up and so now the school is saved and it remains open. We have had a long-term working relationship with M Marina Romanovna, the school director, and have partnered in many projects including wallpapering of rooms and painting the gym floor and buying uh, computers for their office and so on. Uh, we are very pleased to have partners like the Delina School. And this, I'm Rudy Enns. And uh, our dad is Jake Enns, and our grandmother's Anna Enns. And they came from Fischau and Lindenau. And it's really interesting in this museum here to uh, see our name Enns there. And what really brings it home to us is our grandmother, Anna Enns, used to tell us stories about how they 
would go to the pond behind their house, whether that's this pond or that pond, and uh, catch a lot of crayfish. So this is a really uh, happy thing to see our name here in this museum, and in fact, uh, looking at the geography, it all makes sense. Uh, we have uh, many thanks for the, uh, the, the school children that have uh, developed this museum on the behalf of Mennonites in Malashta. Thank you. Okay, I am in the dining area of the Mennonite Center in Molochansk, Ukraine. Uh, in the year 2000, we purchased the building for $6,000 and renovated it and opened up in the spring of 2001. In this room, we serve two hot meals to elderly every week. Often it is their only hot meal that they have. We run various programs, crafts clubs, and uh, we uh, in times past have also taught computer classes. Uh, we have groups that go out and help in the community in many different ways, in the kindergartens, in the schools. Uh, we even installed, helped the city install a, a street lamp out front in the street because it was so dark to walk in the night. Uh, we have a good working relationship with the mayors and uh, the, the medical facilities here at the Munta Hospital. We have uh, donated in the past a, an ambulance and supply the lab with medical uh, chemicals and so on that are needed. We've also given them a microscope and many other things. From here, uh, basically this is our community center. We have our main office here. We have a kitchen. We have a conference room, which is used weekly by uh, the local uh, Mennonite congregation on Sundays and during the week for their uh, Bible studies. We are a multifaceted uh, organization that helps wherever we can help in the community. And we like to think that we are helping Ukrainians help themselves. It has been a tradition that a cruise, uh, Mennonite heritage cruise passengers uh, bring along suitcases of needed items of medication, school materials, clothing, and so on. And this year has been no different. Uh, many passengers have brought items that will be distributed through the Mennonite Center here to where it is most needed. In the background behind me is the sanatorium school that we have just visited. Uh, the Mennonite Center has partnered with this uh, school where uh, children with heart defects stay until they're healthy, often for half a year or more. The, the school houses up to 150 kids at a time. We've had the unique opportunity of partnering this school with the Menno Simons Christian School of Calgary in Canada, and the, the children from Menno Simons and the sanatorium school exchange pen pal letters already with each other for the past two years. We have helped in many ways uh, at the school with paints and school supplies and crafts materials, even floor tiles and so on. And uh, it's, it's a really a blessing to see the partnership between the school in Canada and the school here. We've moved from the school facility of the sanatorium school into the dorm area where the kids uh, stay here uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week for the months necessary for healing to take place. The Mennonite Center has partnered with the Molochant Sports School for many years now, 
and it was a pleasure today to watch these young gymnasts and athletes go through their routines for us. Uh, we have, over the years, supplied uh, them with mats, and uh, we repainted walls and repainted floors, bought uniforms and equipment for them. And uh, you can see that it has paid off, as the, the kids have made good use of it and are very, very talented. just uh, heard a magnificent performance by the uh, Orthodox choir that calls itself Rhapsody. The Mennonite Center has been working with Rhapsody for five or six years and we have helped them to uh, put out two CDs uh, for fundraising and it is really amazing how they have grown in the past uh, few years and they've made it to the point where they're this fall going to enter an international competition for the very first time in Prague. Previously, they have won first place in Kiev uh, for the choir, for best conductor, and the best female soloist. An amazing accomplishment for a group of singers from the t small town of Tokmak, near the former Mennonite uh, colony of Malachna. Mm -hmm. 